So this is my area of comfort. It's the soil growing part and making up of the soil composition. I'm a soil grower myself and fairly experienced in, in just general outdoor gardening for many years. So you know, soil is, is my comfort zone. The hydroponics is going to be my issue to, uh, to get used to it and see can, um, see can I find my comfort zone there. So for these guys, for these chilies, they are uh, not a very specialist plant, um, not hugely dissimilar to cannabis actually in, in terms of what they desire and need uh, soil wise. Um, so they're fairly high performance, high demanding plants, um, but a lot of the uh, requirements are common. Uh, big advantage to soil really is that it is a bit more forgiving, much easier for the starter grower simpler to put together things like ph are not as critical um, you can have a large pots <clears throat> so that the watering is less frequent than it would be required with uh, hydro systems like growing in cocoa and that type of thing where you're trying to keep the root roots tight and uh, dense and efficient uh, here really you're looking to get good root spread get the root right down into the soil uh, and absorb as much of the nutrients as possible. We're also not as concerned, particularly with these plants in their first four or five weeks, not as, we will not be as concerned about nutrition because we're really gonna put everything into the soil mix that should last at the first four or five weeks. If we see deficiencies, so you see, you know, a lightening in the color of the plant or any sort of uh, nutrient deficiency signs, you can add stuff in at that point, but uh, with the soil mix that we're recommending here, it should be good enough to, uh, as I said, last four or five weeks. So what we're starting off with, biggest recommendation that, uh, you know, I did my own research online for the, the chili growing, which I'm not ex that experienced in, is really the basic one, if you wanna just do it really simple, is just use a uh, soil mix that is recommended for roses that will generally have the composition that you're looking for for chili plants. And if you want to, you can just fill your pot with that stuff and that's it, that will do. So it can be really simple and easy and just do that. We're gonna bring it on a little bit further and show you what you can do in terms of mixes uh, to build up um, maybe a longer lasting, slightly higher performance one. But as I said, it can be really simple. And here, we're, this is bells and whistles. You don't have to do it. Lots of people will have their own recipes and their own little ways of doing things. So uh, yeah. One thing I would say is in terms of doing your own thing is when you're growing indoors, you've got a controlled environment. It's nice and warm. It's relatively humid. It's got lots of light uh, and it's generally enclosed. If you bring bugs in there and you bring nasties in there, uh, they will, uh, expand very rapidly and take over and cause you big problems. So it is a big benefit to use uh, soil mixes and um, other additives which come from the garden centers which have been manufactured uh, which are neutralized uh, of any of those nasties in them or at least should be. You, know, you have a better chance. So we've gone with uh, very regular um, soil mixes and additives straight from the garden centers. One other thing just to note before we start filling our pots is I just did a check on the soil and water that we're going to be using. So the water is in the tap, the soil is from our uh, bag and we mixed it up just there a few minutes ago. Come over here and have a look. We got a pH there, still slowly dropping but um, it's at six. So the range recommended for chili plants from a soil point of view is 5.8 to 6.5. So we're right in there in the middle. So that's nice and we checked it. Uh, we're all good. If, if uh, it was different, you can use additives down to the soil. So lime and other things to change the composition of the soil and to get the pH up or down. So if that is an issue for you, you can you can deal with that specific. So let's get start filling our pots. We've got a about a one month old um, chili plant here. 
grown in a little, I guess, one litre pot in a soil mix, a basic soil mix. And we are going to transfer this over into our larger pot. Our larger pot, it's a, I think it's about a 12 or 14 litre pot. Um, it's quite deep, but that doesn't really matter. We're not going to be really using the bottom, or the plant's probably not going to go down there too far, um, given the size of them. <clears throat> but for us, it just elevates it off the ground, and it, it's good for the camera work, so that's why we're using them. First thing to do, and this is my soil mix, uh, is to add some gravel into the bottom, and that's just to stop soggy bottom basically and the chance of uh, roots getting uh, getting soggy and drowning plants drowning. so just talking about maybe 30 now maybe an inch or so of that on the bottom that's all and then <coughs> we're gonna go through our soil I'm about halfway up now so I'm going to put in the mix of things that I'm going to put in. So first of all, I'm going to put in a little bit of vermiculite. So vermiculite, it just helps with uh, moisture and germination. You can see it here. It's kind of like a sawdust kind of composition. Uh, it's going to put in a few handfuls of that. And then we've got perlite, which is great for drainage. It'll uh, it allows drainage freer. It also holds on to moisture for you, so it can um, be a bit more forgiving about your your water if you miss uh, watering or you're a bit delayed. So this stuff is a bit weird, actually. It's a bit, it feels a bit like styrofoam. That is, believe it or not, a natural substance that they mine. Anyway, that goes in. And then we just got some specifics for a chili plant, so it's recommended that you add some bone meal. Bone meal has high levels of phosphorus in it, uh, great for rooting and apparently very good for chili plants. Don't need very much. You know, I'm talking about a small handful per, um, per pot. And we got some Epsom salts. And again, Epsom salts, you're looking for a specific. And uh, Epsom, anything that you want to, um, uh, for magnesium deficiency, so it's to add magnesium to the, the mix, which is uh, desirable for chilies. So again, small little handful. Lo and behold, looks like a salt. Small little handful. In we go. So we got a mix there now of stuff that's going to help the uh, soil perform over a longer period of time. So you can see in here now I'm mixing it around. And just got the got it all mixed in together. Read a hole in it. Just put a pot into. Now just getting our plant out of our pot. Just gonna squeeze it around just to loosen it up a bit. Tip it upside down. We've got some drainage pebbles here. Now you can see our soil, our roots have developed. Just tease them out a bit so they're ready to go wherever they want to go. Put them in and then just firmly bed it in. Probably a bit more soil to make it level. And simple as that. So that's going to go straight into the tent. And the only thing that's needed then is to add the um, drip feeder in now just to give it a water. Because of the size of the pot, it's not going to need a regular watering. You know, watering once a day will do. Uh, so you could do it by hand. You might even get away with it once every two days. Uh, as the plant gets bigger, obviously it's going to demand more water, so more frequent watering. But uh, bigger the pots, generally bigger plants, but also less frequent watering. So if uh, if you want a bit of buffer, 
larger pots. So that's it for the soil. We're going to pop them into a tent and uh, see how they get on.